Hey everybody, my name's Commander Eagle 131 and it's been a while since I last did a channel update, so I'd like to just hang out and chat with you all today. Don't worry, I'm not here to rant and swear about $7 missions. Today's biggest topic is going to be Starfield content on my channel, as well as some other minor projects I kind of want to do on the horizon. So on the docket for Starfield content, I've got two big things I'd like to talk about. The first thing is a new line of Nova Galactic roleplay ships that I am tentatively calling the Nova Galactic 2150 series. It's mostly to be an RP selection of ships geared towards the Starfarer who likes the idea of flying vintage classic car style ships. And the whole idea is to imagine and bring to life Nova Galactic ships that humanity might have used shortly after the Grav Drive tech breakthrough. Uh, before the calamity that befell Earth, and during a period of free worry that I like to think of as a golden age of space flight that humans might have enjoyed in Starfield's historical lore. So the Nova Galactic 2151 project did start. I do have a couple prototype ships in the works. So right here, I'll show it on screen now. Uh, one of the ships that's further along in the design process, but not complete, I've, I've called it, take a deep breath, the Nova Galactic Rocketless Space Transportation System Mark II, or the NG-RSTS-2. I know it just rolls off the tongue, <laughs> but as you know, uh, it, it's kind of like a roleplay ship that that is worked in, tied in with you know actual history. Um, if that makes any sense, um, I don't want to get too deep into the roleplay notes that I've already have written because they may be subject to change. But basically working lore for that build is NASA wanted a cheaper and more efficient way of getting getting people and things off of Earth and back. Um, so, you know, in, in real life, we have our, our space transportation system. That's the space shuttle and then all the rockets that that take it off. It's it's super heavy. It's a lot of fuel. It's very expensive. It's dangerous. Um, so, you know, I have written into the lore, Nova Galactic won a contract to basically make the space transportation system better. And this is what I have pictured. Of course, this is still work in progress, and uh, it, it's a lot of the design stuff is subject to change. So a second ship that I have kind of in the works for the 2150 series is called the Dolos Class Super Tanker. And this is not very far along in the design. In fact, it's still in drafting phase. So this this is like the only image that I have. And it's it was just me playing with some ideas I had in my own head. Um, there's no real role play notes written about this. It was just something I kind of started drafting. But I do like the idea of having a very large ship um, that might suggest that it's, you know, uh, either like a, re a mobile refuel point or a, a maybe a, heli a helium-3 mining chip or, you know, I don't know. Uh, but I do kind of want to design a tanker-style ship in uh, for this uh, particular line of ships. So the Nova Galactic 2150 series is still planned. You're probably wondering where in the heck is it. Um, you can check my uh, community um, tab for some more information regarding all this stuff I'm talking about. Uh, if you don't know, I do try to stay active on there. Um, but yeah, the 2150 series is still planned. Um, but as some of you may know from the community tab, I actually ended up switching gears to another very special EG ship shop project called the Drebin Discovery class. It's going to be an epic roleplay explorer ship akin to many of my other ships similar, like the Ark class or the Acropolis. Um, this is the ship that I most recently did complete and focus on, and it's currently my plan to do something different and very special for it. Um, I want to release a car commercial style cinematic video for it ahead of any sort of showcase slash build video. So that means I actually have two, pla uh, two planned videos for the Drebin Discovery class. I want to save why this ship build is so special for the showcase video, so I won't get too far into the details here. Um, however, the build is very special to me because I built and named it in honor of an old friend of mine I met in Elite Dangerous who passed away in April. Um, he went by Commander Zed Drebin. Uh, 
uh, again, I, I don't want to get too deep into into it uh, during my channel update video here. Uh, I, I really want to save that for the feature videos I have planned. So um, just uh, real quick, uh, when I got news of his passing, I knew I wanted to do something creative for him in his honor. So I, I knew his Starfield ship build would be perfect, um, you know, as I, I'm pretty confident with it. And, you know, I, I knew I could make something neat for him that I would hope that he would like. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was appropriate. He was an even bigger science fiction nerd than I am. So <laughs> I want to say more. I want to keep on talking about him. But um, yeah, I want to save all that for the uh, official showcase build. So I'll just I'll, I'll leave it there. So as far as Eagle, how's Eagle doing? Um, why aren't these videos out yet? Um, so what's going on with Eagle? <laughs> Uh, I know that some of you follow my community tab, and I know I was teasing the ever-living heck out of the Drebin Discovery class ship. Uh, production has begun on the commercial, however, I need to be real with all of you right now. Eagle himself has gotten a bit burned out. <laughs> not just on the video side, but, you know, with everything else. So, I'm sadly not a full-time content creator. I very much wish I could be but my full-time job in real life can often sap the life out of me, and unfortunately that means my creative side of my brain shuts down completely. So I've kind of for now decided to postpone any content relating to Zed's ship for when I can be in tip-top shape. The entire Drebin Discovery class project is incredibly special and important to me, and I want to make sure that I am totally uninhibited before I start production on the two videos again. So my sincerest apologies if any of you have been waiting patiently for these, but please, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Um, uh, I don't want to deliver something subpar for a project that I feel is, you know, so personally important to me. So I am perfectly okay with postponing this uh, until I can be in the right headspace to do this. So, enough about Starfield for now, so let's go beyond Starfield. Um, I just want to say I still would like to keep making videos. I do enjoy it, and I am still planning on it. Um, perhaps some less demanding types of content until I can regain my creative side back. Um, I do play a lot of other ba base building games, so I have been thinking about doing base build tours of some of my favorite builds. So I've started to play this really awesome new survival crafter called Nightingale. It's a gas lamp fantasy game, not steampunk by the way, not steampunk, set in the 1890s. It's uh, set in an alt history timeline where humanity has been in contact with Fae for hundreds of years. It's a post-apocalyptic setting, so having Earth being cut off from humanity and the survivors of this global calamity are now stranded in realms created by the Fae, or the Fairy. Um, it's such a cool aesthetic though. It's, it's, you get some really, really cool tools and weapons that are, are period specific to the 1890s. And not to mention, it's a story driven crafting and survival game, which, um, you know, I've played survival crafters in the past. Uh, and this is my first story driven one. And I felt that the story was what they currently have in the early access build. Um, the story they have is woven into player progression quite nicely. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, so yeah, despite what some people are saying about the game, I think it's great. I, I'm in love with the game. Uh, it's still early access, but the developers, uh, Inflection Games, they're keen on taking player feedback and shaping the game into an experience that all of us want. And so far, I think that they have upheld their promise. Um, they've, we've had so many cool updates to the game, bringing requested quality of life's features and, and content. So anyway, I went off on a tangent there. I just, I love the game so much, I get carried away. <laughs> right, base builds. Um, I would like to show off my main base in Nightingale at some point here in the near future. Um, I can't promise anything, it just depends on my energy and time, um, but you know, recording kind of an ad-lib base build tour video, you know, won't require quite as much um, creative processing power out of me. Um, so I would totally love to show this. This is a, a couple screenshots that you've been seeing of it. Um, yeah, I would really like to show this place off. So the second less demanding piece of content I'm thinking about is, an, is yet another base tour video, but within another game, uh, No Man's Sky. Um, I actually have 
I don't have any No Man's Sky content on my channel. However, NMS always kind of pops up on my list of, of games to kind of do. Um, again, I really love engaging with base building and the like, so I have this insane base in No Man's Sky that I would like to show off. It's a huge flying city with tons of glitch builds, and I've been tinkering with it for the past year. It's my main base in game, and I always end up logging out right here at home. That base, if I were to do a video, would likely be quite long, as I have quite a bit of headcanon roleplay written for it, and the place is just huge with tons and tons of detail. So again, I can't promise, but I do really, really want to cover this base and uh, share it with you all here on YouTube. So to conclude this, this sort of channel update video, I know this one's pretty long, uh, so if you're still here, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I know the news I bring today probably isn't really what all of you wanted to hear, especially if you're following me for my Starfield content. It's certainly not the news I really want to deliver either. I know this ain't the first time I've had to come at you guys with, oh, I can't deliver a video. Um, but, you know, I'll say it again. As far as my current Starfield projects go, this is the important part. I would rather delay production to deliver a quality piece rather than deliver something subpar, especially when the two projects I have on the docket now are, you know, memorializing one of my friends and it's, you know, to me, it's it's super duper important. Um, so I want to make sure that I can be in the right headspace before I can continue working on those. So again, apologies if you guys have been waiting patiently for it. Um, I'll 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 be publishing some stuff whenever it's whenever production resumes. I you will know um, whether it be another channel update or um, my on my community page here on YouTube. So if you don't follow my community page, you know try to remember to uh, click and, and take a look at it. YouTube's not very good at notifying people of. Um, content creators uh, posts on that part of their channel. In fact, I don't even know if it notifies anyone at all because I certainly don't get um, personally um, notified whenever uh, the, the people that I follow on YouTube uh, post to it. So I always have to check. So if you can remember, check. Uh, I try to stay active on there as much as I can. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, again, sorry about the news, but you know, I will return. <laughs> so I guess I shall see you next time.